กาศ uh, Very good evening, friends. Hearty welcome to the fourth lecture under Structural Engineering Series, organized by ACCI Institute's Working Group. Today's presentation will be on one of the most crucial and essential elements in any structure foundations. The topic of today's talk is foundation types, independent, combined, raft, strips, pine, hybrid. The speaker will be taking us through the requirements for different types of foundation designs, the various steps of analysis, load combinations, critical reactions, soil investigations, and location of site will be detailed out in his talk. Methods of soil investigation, types of foundations, factors affecting selection of types of foundations, soil shoring for deep foundations, points to be remembered while casting the foundations will all be articulated by the speaker. While highlighting the salient features of reinforcement detailing and significance of development lens, the speaker Please mute all Hear you. Not a disturbance in the background. Participants, can can you kindly kindly mute your audio, please? Sir, we can mute all the mic. Ranjit, are you there? Hello. Yeah, Rangnath, I think, can you hear us? Hello. Satish, can you share the screen? Or he should allow you to share the screen? I should allow him one minute. I am not able to block everyone. Okay, uh, try that later on. I'll just uh, complete the uh, introduction of uh, Engineer Satish Raipure. Uh, Engineer Satish Raipure has had varied experience in teaching, structural designing, and project management consultancy. He has designed and managed various civil engineering projects that include bridges, capital plants, buildings and townships. And the has to his credit a few prestigious awards for engineering in India. He had also worked as chairman ACCI Nagpur Center. Engineer Satish Raipure is in the circle of his technical platform and workshops that is conducted PG engineering several engineering colleges. I now ask Engineer Satish Raipure to deliver his lecture on the topic of the day. Engineer Satish Raipure, the floor is all yours. Yeah. Satish, you can unmute uh, one minute. L let me. 
so p star equal to i r to 1 minus i. Yes. Uh, thank you, Mr. Anandan. Yeah. Uh, Please go ahead. You will have to give share option. I'll do that. Please allow me to share my screen. Yeah. You got it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yes. Is it clear? Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Good evening, everyone. Good evening, President uh, Ashwat, Ajit uh, Sabni, sir. Uh, Mr. Ranganathan, thank you very much for that wonderful uh, introduction. Uh, today is my, the, uh, in this series, I am the fourth one to speak after the stalwarts like uh, Surya Prakash, Basavaraj, and Ranganathan. I am going to speak on the foundations. The contents of my presentation is uh, I'm going to uh, tell you about little about the structural designing, how uh, what is the structural designing, then the importance of geotechnical investigation, and then uh, types of uh, we will discuss about the types of foundation and their selection. And the very important aspect of the construction that is reinforcement detailing, and then few do's and don'ts at site, which may lead to some casualty uh, during the construction, as particularly in the excavation. What is structural designing? It's a manner in which the load bearing members of a physical framework support each other in sharing the load. A structure to the building is same as the skeleton to a human being. Like beams and columns, I treat them as bones of uh, any structure and foundation. It's a very important part of any structure. And today we are going to discuss about the foundation. This is the usual load path. How the load travels to the uh, travels to the different structural members. First, we always load uh, give the load on the slab. The slab transfers load to the beams. Beams will have additional load of the walls, and this beam will transfer be a load to the columns, and the columns will transfer load to the footing, and footing will disperse that load over the larger area to the soil beneath. This is how the general the load flows from top to bottom. What are the requirements for the foundation design? The first one is the detail analysis of the structure. Unless we do the detail analysis of the structure, we cannot get the reactions. Uh, Raghunath uh, sir has described us about the various load combinations. What are the load combinations? What are the different loads? And what are the critical combinations of uh, load that will give us the critical reaction of the column? And generally, we design the foundation for the vertical load, horizontal load, and the moments which will be acting on the column. The next part that is very important as far as the foundation design is concerned is the soil investigation report. This is a very neglected part uh, in most of the structural uh, uh, structure design. Many a times uh, the designer himself decides what is the, uh, the safe bearing capacity of the soil and uh, do the foundation design. But it should not uh, be like that for a uh, bigger structure or important structures. Soil investigation report must be carried out before starting any, any type of structure, whether it may be a small residential bungalow or a flat scheme or a commercial complex. And it's a mandatory in big structures like towers, bridges, dams, etc. And one more thing the designer should have a look at it is the location of the site. The designer must visit the site before and, uh, giving the foundation drawing to the contractor. It plays a very important role and gives a very detailed idea about 
what, what is the location? What is the site? What are the site conditions actually were there? These are the various load combinations which are meant for a multi storied building. These are in all 15 to 16 load combinations are there. And after analyzing with this load combination, we get the reactions on the foundations on the supports for which we design the foundation. This is for zone 2 category structures. If we go for design for the structures in zone 3, zone 4 or zone 5, this combination increase, increases and it may go up to 50 or 60 load combinations for zone 5 building. That also depend upon the type of the building uh, and it's all the designers discussion to use as many load combination as they wish. After doing the analysis, the design methods, the there are three type three design methods, the working stress method, which is now uh, uh, obsolete. Nobody uses working stress method. When we started uh, doing structural designing, we always used to do uh, by the working stress method around uh, 20, 25, three years, uh, uh, 20, 25 years back. <clears throat> Some. Then the ultimate load theory, this is also not uh, being used nowadays and nowadays everyone is uh, designing the foundations or uh, any structure using limit state method. It gives you very economical uh, solutions. About foundations, some important points. Strength of any structure lies in its foundation. If the foundation is not strong enough, the, there is no point in constructing the structure over it. And it must. I'm getting some messages. OK, it must rest on uh, firm base. It must safely support and transfer all types of loading and their combinations to the ground. It must be strong enough to minimize the differential settlements. This differential settlement plays a very crucial role. And if the if we don't take care about this care of this differential settlement, the structure will develop number of cracks and structure may be not usable at all. Soil is not like a concrete. Concrete is a very hard soil is not like that. Soil has most wide range of characteristics. One should also check the groundwater, which is available at the uh, site during the which is which will uh, be there while excavation, and you should uh, also check for its any uh, sulphate content, and this sulphate content will definitely attack uh, with the concrete and the steel, and that will deteriorate the uh, concrete in due course of time. That's why this, uh, if designer found that this water is not suitable for uh, uh, the construction, yeah, the uh, I construction. Uh -huh. Then you should uh, treat that water or do take some uh, uh, use some acid resistant cement. Depth of excavation should be such that it should be sufficient to overcome the detrimental soil movements. During course, uh, in due course of time, the there are movements in the soil, especially in the in case of black cotton soil. Black cotton soil gets swelled when it comes in contact with water and it shrinks when it's dried up. And this will create unnecessary movements in the subsoil strata. And that will also uh, uh, result into the settlement of the foundation. That's why this depth of excavation, especially in load bearing structures, uh, especially in independent footings, we must go up till the depth of uh, uh, depth should be sufficient to overcome the this dentimental soil movement. It should have sufficient factor of safety against overturning and sliding. This comes into picture when we design the high rise building or uh, structures like bridges, towers, chimneys. Because of the wind force and the seismic uh, forces, uh, moments, uh, very heavy moments are developed on the uh, uh, over the foundations and it should have a sufficient factor of safety for uh, against overturning and sliding. The foundation must be feasible both technically and economically. 
it plays a very important economy plays a very important role in designing of any type of foundation that's why the soil investigation is very important to get the exact separating capacity so that we can design the economical foundations and similarly it should be practical enough to build without any adverse effect on surrounding structures nowadays every city is getting crowded and uh, in dense areas if you want to construct a commercial building or a tall building then we need to take care of deep excavations while uh, on the surrounding structures while uh, when we do the excavations for our building the other building should not get damaged in foundation we should always try to avoid eccentric footings the eccentric footings cannot be designed properly the load distribution is not proper in the eccentric footings that's why we should always combine this eccentric for eccentric footing eccentric footing with the the columns by providing additional columns and we uh, we should, must provide the combined footings the combined footings are very uh, easy to analyze and it's very easy to provide and that will definitely reduce the uneven settlement because of the eccentric footing and one more important point when we give the foundation drawing we must be very careful about the center lines of the column especially in pb structures this center line of the column plays a very very important role in cities big cities because if the center lines are not proper column may go into the side margins and that will create problems to the owner putting of column center line is also very important in uh, our area we always provide the center line of the b not exactly the center line of the column in pb structure again that center line kind of center line is a little bit different because that is governed by the steel line and again we will be seeing those uh, drawings also and we should be very careful about giving the center lines of the columns avoid concreting in water filled pits many times i found that in small uh, residential construction even in multi story flat scale constructions if we find found the subsoil water after the excavation then the labor contractor puts dry mix actually dry mix in the that uh, particular area when we asked him what, uh, why you are putting the dry mix he always he said the well, water is already there and it will mix uh, the concrete and we will get the strength friends it's not like that it uh, you should always use a low water cement uh, low water cement ratio in concreting uh, of uh, water fill pits and while concreting and even after concrete uh, till the concrete gets settled you should drain out the water from particular uh, a sump constructed in that area or by the side of the uh, footing but never ever put the dry mix in the footing this is the center line of the column always remember that the footing center and column center should coincide here you can see the center line is given at the 115 mm from the face of the column because this is the center line of the beam there is a wall above uh, in superstructure and there will be a beam from the outer face of the column and this 130 mm wide beam is provided and this is the center line of the beam not of the center line of the column in case of combined footings also we must try to coincide the center the uh, center of gravity of the load and the center of gravity of the footing by adjust adjusting the dimensions dimensions of the footings putting additional load or by increasing the area area of the footing we can easily adjust that but the co uh, coinciding the line of action of load as well uh, and the footing that is very important this is the pb structure here the center line is again different you can see that in pb column there is a wall and after pb column there is a wall we must also provide support to this wall and there will be a rcc column just behind this pb column here the center line is different here the center line is as per the pb center because they are going to manufacture 
as per this. Hence, we should be very careful about giving the center lines for the particularly PEB structure because there is hardly tolerance of 12 to 12, 12 mm in the rafters which will be put over the columns of the PEB, this PEB column. Hardly to tolerance of 12 to 15 mm, not more than that. Hence, there should not be any error more than of 12 to 15 mm in such cases. Otherwise, that PEB structure will not fit over these columns. And again, you have to go in for breaking the foundations and creating additional the uh, uh, making this column in the, as per the drawing of the PEB. Hence, very be very careful about this center lines of PEB structures. Now we will see the what is the geological sure. geological geotechnical investigation. As I said earlier, this geological investigation is very neglected, particularly in small uh, uh, small structures. Why to spend money? This is the uh, more money. This is the always uh, question put by the owners. You can judge yourself and uh, give us the idea about what would be the set bearing capacity of the soil. I always recommend them. This is not my field. And it's always better to get the exact condition of the soil on which we are going to uh, we are going to erect the structure. They spend lakhs of rupees in interiors of the building, but they really don't want to spend few thousand rupees in the geological investigation. You will have to convince them that this few thousands can you can save you at least lakhs of rupees in the foundation itself. The main part of this soil investigation is to get the exact bearing capacity or where we should lay our foundation. Bearing capacity is the capacity of soil of rock to withstand load without shear failure and within limited settlements. Maximum settlement allow as per IS are in isolated fittings, the 50 to 75 mm, raft 75 to 100 mm, pile it's only 12 mm, different settle, differential settlement. That means when the two uh, foundations are nearby each other, the differential settlement should not be more than a span upon 300, where the span is the distance between the two adjacent footings. Why soil investigation? The process of identifying the layers of deposit that underlie a proposed and their physical characteristics is generally referred to as subsurface exploration. Its main purpose is, purpose is selecting the type and depth of foundation suitable for a given site. Evaluating the load bearing capacity of the soil on which the foundation can be raised. Estimating the probable settlement of a structure determining potential foundation problems. We can also fix up the design methodology. And it also gives us the location of the water table. So all these things help us while designing the foundation as well as uh, starting the construction. Detailed soil investigation is done with the help of open trial pits. Bores, field test from which we can do the sampling undisturbed and disturb and the laboratory test. From open, uh, open trial pits and bores, we can take out the disturbed and undisturbed sample and uh, those samples can be tested in the laboratory to do the further investigation. In open trial beds, where the uh, foundation depth is to be limited up to three to four meters, then we can go for the open trial beds. Very useful for sampling disturbed and undisturbed uh, samples. We can also do the density measurement. We can also perform the standard penetration test. It also gives us the permeability and the, it helps us design the, deciding the foundation depth. Its advantages are visual observation. We can see the different soil layers which are available till four, three to four meters. Large quantity of sampling at one level is possible. Better insight of stratification as compared to bore logs. 
in bone labs you will have to be very careful while doing the sampling but in open uh, trial pits we can take out the number of samples and it gives us a better idea about the soil strata available till 3 to 4 meters this bore drilling bore drilling or we also call it as bore lock data the purpose of drilling to confirm the continuity of the stratum in influence zone collection of undisturbed and disturbed samples conduction of standard penetrating uh, penetration test we can also perform the permeability test and collection of the rock cores this bore drilling is very useful for determining the different strata available till say 10 meters or 12 meters that we can then we can decide upon the type of foundation which that which we can recommend uh, to that particular structure it again depends on the lot of uh, factors that we are uh, we will see um, in due course of my presentation there are the different methods by which we can do the this bore drilling agar boring rotary drilling and percussion drilling you can also perform the approximate test at the site one is the pencil test that will determine the plasticity it also gives you idea about the cohesiveness how it is performed just take out the uh, soil sample from the open trial pit or the bore log just roll it with your hands with your hands to hardly 5 mm in diameter and 50 mm in uh, length and hold that uh, piece of uh, soil with your uh, at one end if it get break if it uh, shows cracks or it grind breaks then the soil is not that cohesive if it stand as it is if it remain as it is then that is a very cohesive soil and that uh, will give you at least the uh, uh, say bearing capacity of more than 20 to 25 tons per meter square this is the approximate test when uh, when we do the construction in remote areas where the testing and uh, laboratory testing and site testing uh, taking of instruments to the site is, are not possible then we can uh, decide ourselves with our experience and by looking at the strata how much the same bearing capacity should be of that then another method is thumb penetration test in this we take a lump of soil in our hand and press it with our thumb if we press it uh, just thumb impression is created on the, that soil lump then you can decide that this is a very strong soil the cohesiveness is very cohesive soil and this will also give the strength of more than 20 25 tons per square meter and if it gets penetrated up to your thumbnail then it's a medium type of soil this is the uh, less cohesive that you can assume the strength of a um, self bearing capacity between 10 to 15 tons per square meter and if your whole thumb goes inside to the lump then it's a very uh, less stable and less cohesive material and the uh, self bearing capacity of that soil will not be more than 5 to 10 uh, newton per tons per square meter another method is pocket uh, penetrometer test it's a just uh, instrument just like uh, uh, the measuring uh, air pressure in tires and it has got a piston and if you just press that piston and uh, in the soil lump and some record uh, some uh, it will show some uh, readings and that reading will uh, give you a fair idea about what kind of soil it is classification of soil as per osha the occupation of safety and health administration uh, type a soil this includes clay silty clay sandy clay and clay loam this is the most stable type of soil this is very cohesive and it has got a very high and confined compression strength and this will almost give you more than 20 to 25 tons per square meter uh, self bearing capacity type b soil is less cohesive than the type a this includes angular gravel silt silt loam and these soils are fissured and this gives you medium uh, unconfined compressive strength say range between the 10 to 15 ton per square meter type c it's very low unconfined uh, low unconfined and this uh, include gravel sand granular 
this is a least stable soil and this has got a very low unconfined compressive strength around 5 to 10 tons per square meter these are the different soil uh, properties which we must take into account while designing very important structures and this is uh, uh, this will give you an idea about what are the different uh, about the soil and what uh, how that soil will behave under the different load conditions now we will see the type of the foundations type of the foundations are mainly divided into two types the shallow foundation and the deep foundation shallow foundations are commonly used for smaller projects where the top layer of the soil can be adequately handled in distribution of weight say for, for small residential bungalows or the buildings up to three to four stories and where the hard strata is available at the shallower depth say around three to four meter then we can go for this type of foundations the deep foundations when the loading is very high and the strata adequate strata is not available at a shallower depth then we must uh, go for the deep foundations this deep foundation transfer the load down to a layer of substrata bedrock to ensure the structure integrity mainly this is done with the piles this piles may be friction pile or end bearing pile and there may be a combination of pile and raft in the if the strata is very weak mainly for the buildings this uh, shallow foundations are preferred and for the bridges and the buildings with the heavy very heavy loading and where the strata is not proper we go for the pile foundations the deep foundations the end bearing piles and the well foundation earlier both these type of foundations were uh, utilized in providing the foundations to the specially breeze structures but nowadays in multi storied building this end bearing piles are quite uh, preferred before 5 to 10 years back this uh, in nagpur this uh, pile driving instruments were not pile boring instruments were not available but nowadays uh, in the because of the metros and the flyovers and the bridges this end bearing piles are being used in uh, cities also for uh, uh, buildings also the well foundations these were preferred in bridges only but and when the water table water depth is very high and it's very difficult to construct the coffer dams and it's very difficult to drain out the water and when it's very difficult to pass that water uh, to divert that water then we go for the well foundations these well foundations are very costly but nowadays even uh, in standing water also the uh, end bearing piles the, the certain machines are available which can provide the end bearing piles in standing water also the shallow foundations this is the wall type or load bearing friction files single or double under rim the spread or isolated footing that is you can provide the trapezoidal footing box type footing or step footing strip footing combined footings and then mat and raft footing we will see one by one before going into that we will see the uh, different factors that will affect the type of foundation the first one is the type of soil if it is a very loose soil then we and the structure is not that heavy then we go for the open type of soil, open open type of foundation when the type of soil is black cotton yellow soil murub hard murub soft rock and hard rock for each and every type of soil we will have to recommend the different types of footings it again depends upon the level at which we encounter this type of uh, uh, we encountered with the hard strata 
Suppose the hard murum is available at the depth of three to four meter, we can definitely go for the open footing. Hard murum, soft rock, or hard rock is available at the shallower depth, we can definitely go for the open type of footing. In case of black cotton soil, when the structure is very heavy and the area is very large, then the raft foundation or a mat foundation is the only solution. Same, same is the case with the yellow soil also. But in case of load bearing structures, where the uh, entire structure is being constructed in brickwork, no RCC uh, columns and footings are, uh, are to be provided. And if the soil is black cotton soil, then we will have to go till a certain depth where this movement is will not occur. And there we will have to start the foundation for the load bearing also. It's entirely depend on the bearing capacity of the soil and the level at which we get the bearing capacity, get bearing capacity desired bearing capacity. Most of the time we found that if we dig out if you say uh, so load bearing, uh, say bearing capacity is say 20 tons per square meter at a depth of 3 meter and just by excavating 1 meter more and if we get the bearing capacity of 40 ton per square meter, then it's always preferable to go for 1 meter deep again because the excavation will not cost you much of the money. But the difference between the same bearing capacity of 20 to 40, it's almost double. And you will say at least 50% of the cost of the foundation. That's why the soil investigation with the bore log is very important and it will give us a clear cut idea where the good strata is and what its capacity. Then we can decide upon the depth of the foundation and we can design it accordingly. It also depends upon the type of the structure. First, all, uh, uh, a very heavy loading. We will have to do the rigorous analysis and uh, we will have to try out the different combinations. Suppose the structure is very heavy and the strata is not available, then we can uh, um, uh, we can either we can go for the raft at a smaller depth, smaller depth of excavation, and we will have to work out whether this raft foundation is economical and or the end bearing piles foundation is economical. If the rock is available at say 8 to 10 meters, then we can definitely go for the end bearing piles. Because this costing uh, pile, costing of the pile boring and casting is not much nowadays. Earlier it was very costly, but nowadays a lot of machines and uh, mechanisms are uh, available. And with that, we can definitely save on the uh, cost of the foundation. Isolated or combined uh, open footings used for the building where the loads are light or there are strong soil at a shallower depth. This footing deliver the load directly to the supporting soil. Area of the footing is load up uh, uh, the total load plus uh, weight of the footing divided by SBC that will set bearing capacity that will give you the area of the footing. Generally, it is suitable for low rise buildings, say one to uh, uh, G plus one to G plus five floors. And it requires firm soil condition that are capable of supporting the building on the area of the spread footing. For the foundation subjected to seismic or wind load combination, stresses in steel and concrete can be increased by 33.33% as per the code. Footings are designed for shear at a uh, distance of D, that is the width of the column from the face of the column at D and D by 2. Footings are always designed for the passive pressure only. No tension is allowed in the in foundation because it will cause uplift of the uplift of the foundation and uh, it will create an unnecessary additional movements and that will develop cracks in the foundations. Hence, it is always designed for positive pressure only. These are widely used because they are most economical. I, I said in the beginning that your foundation should be economical and practical. So this is most economical type of foundation. When we want to provide open footings, we should investigate the soil up to 5 meter. If you are going to provide the foundation at 3 meter, this influence zone generally varies up to the two meter and we should also uh, check what type of soil is available here. 
Sometimes it happens that a very hard strata is available here, and if you dig out one, uh, two, or three meters more, and then you will find that a very soft layer. If it is confined, then no problem. If it is not confined, then the settlement may occur. That's why we must investigate up to the five meter. If you want to provide the foundation, open cast foundations at three meter depth. This is a load bearing type of foundation where the all load is transferred through walls only. During old uh, old days, uh, around uh, say 25, 30 years back, even in nowadays, most of the people in uh, small towns, they go for the load bearing structures where the wall transfers load from the slab to the foundation. If the load is very heavy, say the G plus two or G plus three uh, story building up to G plus three, we can go for the this load bearing structures. The only disadvantage in such type of structure is we have to construct wall over wall in all the floors. That means wherever there is a wall on ground floor, the same at the same location, you will have to provide wall on first floor and the same case in the second floor also. That is the only disadvantage in uh, such type of building. We cannot uh, have the uh, different uh, locations of the walls because the load is mainly transmitted uh, transmit, transmit through the walls only. This is the open type of trapezoidal foundation, the column footing. You can see here this open uh, open pit and you can see here the foundation strata. So this is the best way to visualize, go to the side and visualize the strata. If this strata is good enough, so you can uh, lay the foundation over this strata. You can see a very cohesive strata, very stiff strata, and it is perfectly vertical. Even after excavating for at least, it must have been constructed, uh, excavated eight to ten days before, before this foundation was laid. But still, it is in perfectly vertical condition. That means this soil is very cohesive soil, and we can lay the foundation at this location. If the tests, are, uh, if you don't want to taste the uh, uh, soil beneath, but you can, uh, you can get a very good idea about the type of soil and the strength of that soil. This is again the simple footing and the stay footing. Here you must uh, keep in mind that the load dispersion of load is always in the angle of 45 degrees. This is the wall above the plinth and we must go on increasing the area of the footing, area of the foundation so that it will be spread over a very large area depending upon the type of soil beneath. If it is very hard, you can uh, reduce the number of steps, but if it is not hard, you will have to go deeper and increase the area of the footing so that the pressure at this level should be uh, should be equal to the separating capacity of the soil so that the uneven settlements will not occur. Generally, whatever this projection is, the depth, same depth is provided uh, of the PCC or RCC raft so that the dispersion angle will be 45 degrees. This is the sketch showing that you should go to the depth which is sufficient to overcome the soil movements. Especially, you should be very careful in the black cotton soil. In, a, in our area, around 70-80% to 70-80% location, we come across this black cotton soil. We always prefer to go below uh, 2 to 2.5 meter. Generally, this development occurs till 2 meters, 1.5 to 2 meters. And if you lay the foundation below 2 meters, then it will be perfectly okay. Even, even if the soil bearing capacity is low, but you can lay the foundations beyond 2 to 2.5 meters so that the ground developments will not happen at that level and the foundation will be safe and stable. This is a very typical picture of uh, open footing, this column and footing, which is designed for different loads. You can see here the moment in both the direction, horizontal force in both the direction and the vertical force. You can see here that the pressure is always positive. If it is, if it is not, uh, tension is not allowed uh, in any case in the uh, to occur in the foundation.
when the two adjoin, adjoin, uh, adjacent footings uh, get overlap, area of the footings get overlap, then we will have to go for the combined footing. The load on this column and no load on this column, the area required for these loads, if it is more and uh, this footing gets overlap, then we will have to go for the combined footing. Here also, you should keep in mind that the CG of the loads and CG of the uh, center of the footing, they should coincide or they should be in such a way that they should not develop any tension in the foundation. And you will have to design for this uh, uh, moments and the actual forces and you will find that at number of in number of cases you will have to provide a top reinforcement at the center portion because whenever this load acts on this foundation this uh, bending moment diagram is hogging at this point and this uh, you must provide the reinforcement where the where the, the, there is a moment that's why in most of the cases you will have to provide the regular top reinforcement in the combined footing. In uh, isolated footing, it may or may not required at number of places. Another typical case of uh, foundation when we have the common wall structures it, uh, in dense areas or in uh, cities where the in uh, uh, mass housing there are uh, plots are very small and uh, well, municipal corporation allowed to have a common wall between two uh, adjacent plots and when the between two adjacent plots when the, there is a common wall you cannot go beyond your plot boundary here it is your plot boundary and you cannot go beyond this because this land belongs to some other person you cannot encroach into his land at many times you will find that only the eccentric footings are provided if you ask that designer to give me the give me the detailed calculation of this eccentric footing, he will not be able to provide you the uh, detailed calculation of the eccentric footing. Such type of uh, column should be provided with this tap beam footing. If there is no column here, but you can create a column here, and uh, but it should have some loading. Otherwise, this will again fail. This tap beam bears the upward. Uh, thrust of this footing and this tra uh, transfer this to the this column and both these footings in with this tap beam bears the load of the column which is coming which is coming over this tap uh, eccentric type of uh, footing column where the eccentric type is required so always insist that pro uh, provision of this tap beam footing in case of common wall construction The rough foundation is a large slab supporting number of columns under the entire under the entire structure or a large part of the structure to lower the contact pressure compared to the spread footings. When the building is uh, multi-story, the naturally the load on the column will be very high, and if the strata is of medium type, then uh, area required is very large and when the column spacing are uh, columns are placed uh, closely the footings of all the foundations will get overlap when we design the foundation first we do the analysis and then find out the reactions and then first we try with the open footings when and we plot the area required uh, for each column and when we found that the, the footings are getting overlap, first we try for the combined footing, combined footing of two columns or three columns. When in a row we combine with the number of columns, then we have to provide the strip footing. But when you found that when you find that the almost every uh, footing of every column is uh, overlapping with each other, then there is no point, uh, no other solution than the rough foundation. When the bearing capacity is very low, it is recommended. When the collar spacing of the structure is so close that the individual footings would overlap each other, then the foundation, rough foundation is to be provided. It can cope up with the mix or poor ground, poor ground conditions. Like I said, if it is a type C the soil, that means black cotton soil or a very less cohesive soil, then such type of foundations are recommended. 
even for a ground or a G plus one or G plus structure, if the soil is not proper, then we should insist on this rough kind of foundation. It always reduces the differential settlement. This is the mat or raft. Uh, we call it as the number of columns. They provided with the common footing for all the columns. The analysis of this is very critical and we should be very careful while analyzing this uh, type of foundation. You can use any software for analyzing this. You can do it in SAP, you can do it in STAT or you can also do it in SAFE. SAFE is most widely used for such type of foundation. When the load is very high, very huge and uh, depth requirement from the shear criteria is say around 1.5 meters or 1.2 meters, then it's very uneconomical to provide the raft of complete 1.5 meter if the area is very uh, large. Recently, we designed a code building that has got almost more than 10,000 square meters. The SBC is very low, around 17 ton per square meter, and the building was G plus 8. And with the lies, it was a code building. The spans were very quite uh, large as compared to the normal buildings. Then it was very difficult to provide the raft of 1.5 meter uniform depth. But uh, there was no option. And uh, we, uh, uh, in such cases, we design it for the minimum load. We find out the depth for minimum load. And wherever the load is high, we provide additional uh, pedestals to take care of the shear under the column. But when the um, columns are not that uh, uh, closely spaced, say around to five to six meters. In such cases, we can also minimize the depth of slab, depth of wrap slab by putting beams. If this is six meter long, six meter apart, and if you want to provide from the shear criteria, here the depth requirement is more. Here also the depth requirement is more. You can see that if this is 450 and this is 450, 900 mm depth requirement is here only. But at this location or at this location, the depth requirement is not that much. So then we can design the slab for a minimum depth requirement and we can put the beams, the grid of beams connecting all the columns. And we can design this beam for the upthrust load. We can analyze, we can prepare a model like this in the any software and we can uh, by providing upward intensity, we can design this slab and we can design the beams. Only problem in such cases is the reinforcement required in the beam is very huge. It's really very high in the reinforcement requirement and the main bars and the stirrups requirement is very high in such kind of But still, in the last structures, when the area is more, we can save uh, money if we provide the such type of structures. It's always better to analyze the raft as a whole and then the uh, slab beam type of foundation and you should find out the costing which is required for this and the total raft because nowadays the concrete is not that costly but the steel is uh, very costly but in case of raft the steel requirement is very less as compared to the slab and beam type the deep foundations Andraj. Huge vertical load with respect to soil capacity. Very weak or uh, problematic soil. Then we go for the deep foundations. The huge lateral loads that is in case of like uh, in tower and chimney. The score depth criteria. When they, wherever there is a score depth criteria, then we go for the deep foundation. In many cases during rainy season, we heard that this bridge got washed away. Mainly because of the scoring of the uh, soil below the foundation. It get washed away along with the floods and then that bit get uh, settled down. Recently, the same case happened in the last rainy season in uh, around uh, 250 kilometers from Nagpur on a Panganga river. They had provided the end bearing pipes, but while constructing, while constructing, the contractor has not gone till the depth of the, uh, till the depth where the rock, exactly rock was available because of the uh, some uh, miscalculation in the soil investigation and uh, he has not carefully seen the rock depth which is available at that particular location 
he provided us uh, end bearing pine and within one year that foundation got settled so that's why this criteria is very important and uh, you should always be careful about while putting the foundations especially for the bridges on the river for fields having very large depth the road network is increasing day by day and they are uh, increasing the two lanes to four lanes four lanes to six lanes and many times it happens that uh, they have to cut the hill and to retain the fields which has got a very large depth we will have to provide some soil stabilization and soil retention there we can use such type of uh, foundations urban areas for future and large construction near the existing buildings like i said in the dense areas we have to construct if we have to construct a multi story building then we must take care about the adjoining structures they should not be in danger because of our construction mainly the deep foundation deals with the pile uh, pile foundation basically two types of piles the friction piles and end bearing piles and the combination of both like i said earlier this friction pile they can be used for a uh, uh, smaller uh, residential uh, structures but this friction where the strata is not available even after 15 meter 20 meter or 25 meter hard strata is not available we can design these deep piles as a friction piles but in this case the pile diameter will be very very large so around 1 meter or 1.2 meter or 1.5 meter and the resistance is developed due to the friction between the soil and the concrete this end bearing piles in end bearing piles it has to go into the rock if the rock is available at say 8 meter 10 meter or 15 meter or 17 meter deep then this pile must end in the rock and it should have a socket length of at least two times its diameter the bearing capacity of piles depends on the structure strength of the pile itself or the strength of the soil whichever is less number of piles required upon the safe load that a pile can carry then we will have to if the number of piles are more then we will have to design the pile cap also the care should be taken that the spacing between the two piles should be at least 2.5 meters diameter of the pile in case of end bearing piles but if it is a friction pile then it should be at least 3 times diameter of the pile and pile cap are designed pile caps are designed for compressive load cases only that means no tension is allowed in the piles tension means it will get uplifted uplifted that is not at all allowed in the piles it should be always in the compression this is the end bearing uh, typical sketch of end bearing pile you can see the soil weathered rock and rock of uh, very high capacity and this embedded lane should be at least two times diameter of the pile this load is transferred to the greater depths on uh, sound rock and uh, loads are very high and a good stratum is not available at the shallow depth then we go for the such end bearing piles this is a typical detail of uh, under rim piles we can have the single under rim piles basically these are you for ground floor structure or the compound wall the depth of pile should be minimum 3.6 meter we can have a single under rim or double under rim usually the diameter of this is 2.5 times the under rim is diameter uh, 2.5 times the diameter of the pile but in such type of construction my name this type of pile should be utilized for a uh, uh, low uh, low uh, type of constructions that means the where the load is where not that much because usually these construction are done by the local people and those people are not very aware of this uh, importance of this rimmer and you are not very sure that the very rimmer is uh, excavated like this only and when we do the concreting the nobody is 100% sure that the concrete is filled in this rimmer portion also unless this rimmer uh, are filled with the concrete the friction will not be developed and it will not sustain the load for which it is intended
this is the uh, picture of uh, pile cap with the two piles. The pile are uh, uh, taken up to the pile cap bottom and this uh, usually the pile cap is provided below the ground because it has got a very huge size. So uh, it will obstruct in the further construction at the ground level. It is always provided at the ground level or the below ground level. And it is always designed for compression load only. And all the forces for which it is designed that can be seen over this. Similarly, the uh, three uh, three pile uh, three pile cap. This is a triangular cap. And again, we we'll have to take care that at every uh, pile, every foundation, the CG of the load and the CG of the uh, foundation should coincide. The column and footing center should coincide so that the uh, load transfer will be uniform. It is usually located at the center of the triangle. This is the four pile cap. Four pile cap uh, is a, one of the most safest type of structure. In case of three pile, if you are going to use higher diameter for the three pile, I will recommend you to go for the lower diameter and provide four number of piles. This will take care of the moment in both the direction and it will be more stable. There are n number of pile uh, types. Based on the material use, steel pile, concrete pile, timber pile, based on the transfer of load, end bearing, friction, or the combination of bearing and friction, based on method of ice installation, the driven pile, driven cast in situ, board cast in situ, screw pile, jack pile, load bearing piles, compaction pile, tension pile, sheet pile, fender pile, batter pile, anchor pile. This is based on the uses, based on the displacement, displacement pile, and non displacement pile, and under a pile, just we have seen. In most of the cases, the cast in situ piles are preferred over the uh, precast piles because the precast pile will require more machinery to drive the piles in the soil. And very care you have to take, uh, very utmost care you have to take that it should go straight. On the under rim piles, it's very difficult to judge the uh, load which it will carry. That's why this dynamic pile load testing is performed once the pile is casted. This is a very simple method and this will give you the fair idea about the uh, load carrying capacity of the pile. When we design the pile, the usually the geotech uh, uh, consultant gives you the actual load as well as the horizontal load, which will which that pile can the pile, pile of particular diameter can safely take for that particular type of soil strata available at site and at a particular depth. But when we cast the pile, we should, we must shake it once. At random, we can, we should do the random testing uh, to know how much exactly the pile load is. Um, pile is taking the load. Whether we have designed the pile according uh, rightly or not, or the casted pile is taking the load which uh, for which it is intended. This is a very. Uh, small procedure a load is dropped from the height and this is connected to a laptop to a software and that will measure the deflection deflection of the pile and that um, and that will give you the approximate load that this uh, pile can carry similarly the pile integrity test is also carried out whether the concreting has been done properly or not that you must carry at uh, each and every pile this is a well foundation. This is the well foundation, like I said, is mainly used for the bridges. And uh, this well may be of concrete, may be of steel, different types of materials can be used. When there is a standing water in the river, this is particularly used for river uh, bridges only. When there is a standing water and which cannot be diverted or drained or uh, get rid of that water. You can you can't get rid of that water. Then this well for type of foundations are generally preferred. Either they are uh, precast and then they are taken to the site. They are inserted. Uh, they are placed at the location, and uh, uh, from the inside of this, the excavation is done. First, the water is taken out, and then the excavation is done, and then it is taken out, uh, taken to the desired level of the foundation. This cutting edge helps you in guiding the uh, well uh, properly. 
but this is a very risky type of foundation the tilting of will always happens and then again it will, to bring that will back to its position again it's a hell of a task it's a very difficult task many times we uh, avoid such kind of foundation in river bridges by creating the different spans different arrangement of the span so by adjusting the span arrangement you can easily get rid of uh, such type of uh, foundations but when there is uh, it is unavailable there is no other option to go for the well foundation once this is taken to the desired level of the foundation this is refilled with uh, this is filled with the sand and the top plug is uh, it is sealed with the top plug and then well cap is provided over which the pier can be erected this is a very costly type of foundation and only specialized people uh, can do that everybody cannot do that this is a hybrid type of foundation raft plus pile when the strata is not good and the uh, hard strata is also not available at the um, at a uh, greater depth then we go for the combination of this raft plus pile this also helps in uh, reducing the area of the raft what happens in number of cases when the uh, number of stories are more the raft requirement area of the raft requirement is very huge it can go in the adjoining plot then in such cases uh, we go for this combination of raft plus pile the part of the load is taken by the raft and part of the load is transferred to the piles but analysis of this is very critical and only expertise people should try for this and detailing is again a very important task of uh, in such cases because the part of the load is taken by the raft and part of the load is transferred to the soil this is very uh, peculiar case and uh, you should be very careful about the reinforcement detailing and uh, calculating the depth of prop which is required for this you can see the cross section of this the raft is provided and also the piles are provided now we will come to the very important part of the um, foundation that is reinforcement detailing it's a link between the planning and execution the designer usually will do a very rigorous analysis of each and every structure and prepare the detailed calculations and the everything uh, at his office and then the drawing is prepared with the reinforcement showing in it and the different sections if this is not prepared properly the whole exercise will be a uh, will not be fruitful because the work is executed on the basis of the drawing which the designer supplies to the site and the person who is executing the work at the site may not have the good idea about how the designer has thought and designed the, the building by which methods and uh, what in what way and what is what are his intentions it's very it should be uh, very clear from the reinforcement uh, reinforcement drawing that how the work is to be executed how the reinforcement is to be tied where and where uh, at important locations you must provide the detailed sections so uh, detailing about the each and every part it's for safety of all of us it's for the safety of the structures and it's uh, for the safety of the people who are going to use that structure and in many cases you can avoid the collapse of the structure by providing proper detailing the is code different is code used for this is 456 1786 13920 that is detailed detailing and sp34 in sp34 you will find the reinforcement detailing of each and every uh, part of the rcc structures right whether it be footing whether it may be column pile slab retaining walls each and everything is given in this sp 4 and one must one everyone should have this sp 34 in its library so that you can work out uh, very good details you should prepare the drawings very properly and accurately if possible label each and every bar show the shape of the bar at critical location this is very important 
indicate cover ldc and ldt at important location this ldc and ldt is very important from the fixity point of view ldc is the development length in comparison ldt is the development length in data and at many places you will find that this criteria is not followed and because of this the structure may show some effect of the bending moment or the shear uh, which is acting uh, on the particular structure because this ldt and ldt give to the fixity to the assessi members whether it may be column foundation or whether it may be column beam or it is slab beam everywhere this criteria should be followed always try to use uh, minimum types of bar, bar don't try to use from 8 mm to 32 mm per dia bars this work out the quantity of the bar which is required approximate quantity which is if you are you <coughs> if you are using 8 mm bar and it is hardly required in 100 mm 100 kg and if you are using 10 mm bar which is required at one ton to just eliminate 8 mm bar and provide the uh, 8 mm uh, 10 mm bar in place of 8 mm with the increased spacing so that there won't be any wastages and uh, the builder or the contractor will have to bring the number of minimum types of bars grade of steel and its make shall be clearly mentioned don't use different types of grades and the various types of reinforcement bars at one side if you are using fe500 go for fe500 everywhere if you are using m25 concrete uh, provide m25 concrete everywhere because different gates of steel and different gates of concrete can may confuse the builder and as we all know that this work is executed by the people who uh, who don't have any uh, this technical uh, theoretical or technical education and they learn by their experience and they may not uh, be aware of what type of uh, concrete and what type of steel makes the difference in the designing the reinforcement lay for future expansion shall be clearly protected many times it was found that the dowel bars are left as it is even in the foundations but it should be properly protected and it should be clearly mentioned in the drawing certain point remember the side engineer should always uh, be careful and the minimum reinforcement in any footing shall be same as that of slab that is 0.125 12% of the cross section area use lower dia with the minimum 100 mm uh, spacing center to center spacing cover should be 50 mm all around this will prevent any uh, leakages inside the uh, uh, foundation and And always keep in mind that wherever there is a there any concrete member which comes in contact with the soil, you should have at least 50 mm cover all around. In case of column also, many times I found that the column on the upper floors are 230 by 450. The same column size is provided below ground also. Always try to always provide more cover to the bottom. You can increase the size by 25 mm on either side on on four sides. that that means the 230 by 450 column will become 280 by 500 and giving cover of almost 65 mm on all sides it's always better to provide more column below the more cover below the uh, uh some any underground structures in small footings always try to avoid overlaps in case of open footings don't try to provide overlaps but in case of raft or continuous uh, footing or strip footing there is no other option to use overlaps but they should be staggered overlaps don't try to keep all the overlaps at one location only you can use uh, it on the either side so that the one overlap is on the this side and another overlap is on the other side the depth of footing should satisfy the ldc and ldt criteria if you follow this ldc criteria you will find that the depth of footing is more as compared to as required more than the required of a design depth and at number of cases you will find that the minimum reinforcement will be required we will see how this ldc and ldt is given the dowel bars spacer bars chairs etc shall be clearly mentioned and shown in the drawing everything relates to payment if the contractor puts more dowels more spacer bars or more chairs he will not be uh, he may not get paid for it so it's always better to provide uh, at least some notes about this spacer bars and chairs so that the contractor will be paid for that this is the table given in sp16 and uh, you can see that this is ldt 
this is the from the top of the column to the edge uh, end of this bar this is ldt this ldt is nothing but the development length intention but the more uh, critical is this ldc ldc is the top of the uh, top of the footing to the uh, reinforcement or the bottom of the cover bottom of the footing minus cover so this is ldc this is ldc and this plays a very important role even this pedestal uh, is not counted in uh, ldc if you want to provide the ldc you will have to provide the more bigger uh, uh, area so that this uh, can be a part of the footing and then ldc criteria is satisfied we always recommend and we always provide uh, development length of bars for that particular grade and but grade of steel and concrete in our every drawing so that there won't be any confusion how this ldc and ldt should be satisfied at the site if we don't provide this ldc here the fixity of the column with the footing will not be achieved and the most of the designer always treat this support as a fixed support if this fixity is not achieved the end condition type of the end condition will change and definitely it will affect in the analysis and the bird it will create some additional moments and these structures may or may not be sufficient to tackle those uh, because of the end condition change that this the uh, parameters uh, parameters of end condition change the moment will change and this may not be sufficient to tackle that kind of moment or a horizontal force this is a typical type of isolated footing very nicely uh, provided all the covers and everything is uh, provided there is no need of top reinforcement that's why this reinforcement is not continued till top it's very properly tied this is the open the actual photograph of open, open dive propagate in case of depth is more than say for 600 we always recommend to provide nominals reinforcement at the top so that that will uh, prevent the any sinker cracks that will develop at the top and like this the concreting should not be done in uh, when the water uh, in uh, water filled pits you will have to dig one more sump here and take out the water or drain out the water till the concreting and the, this congana even after the concreting till it gets set you will have to remove this soil remove this water and then only this uh, concrete will get the desired strength otherwise not this is a typical picture of the strap beam this is the column on the boundary line or the uh, plot boundary and we cannot provide the uh, extend the foundation on that side you can see this bar these two columns are connected at the footing level with the beam this is the strap beam and uh, we will find that always the for reinforcement required at the top will be more than as compared to the bottom this is again reinforcement detail for the combined footing <clears throat> when the footing of two columns get overlap we need to provide uh, combined footing for them and you will always find that when you analyze this uh, such type of uh, footing you will always find that there is a hogging movement at the top and the reinforcement we will have to provide the reinforcement to take care of that foot and that hugging bending moment you can reduce the you can provide the tapered section here to reduce the cost of uh, reduce the cost of the footing because that reinforcement is not required um, uh, depth is not required here because the depth requirement is at the face of the column this is the eccentric footing at the corner building when the buildings are constructed from boundary to boundary and then the the problem is with the corner columns again this corner column should be tied up with the adjoining columns then only this type of footing uh, can be sustain uh, sustain the load which is coming on the column many times i found that only just this corner footing is provided at number of locations but uh, they don't uh, the, the designer don't uh, designer must have not designed it properly that's why it occurs or it must not have been designed at all because that uh, in small location this uh, contractor is uh, all in one he is architect he is a structural designer he is a supervisor he is everything and whatever he says is the final word to the owner but such type of structure will definitely create some problems in due course of time
This is the slab beam type raft foundation. As I told you, the requirement, def requirement here in the column is very large. That's why. And that's why the reinforcement and depth of the slab here is more and we can reduce the slab depth in between the columns and the uh, beams. You can see the reinforcement requirement is too high. The stirrups and the top bars, bottom bars, everything is very densely provided. In case of pile foundation also, you will have to take care about the LDC in pile for pile reinforcement as well as the column reinforcement. In both the cases, you will have to take care about this development length in comparison. This is a typical detail of end bearing piles. You can see this is the rock level and uh, it is embedded. Embedded two times the diameter. This is 600 mm diameter pile and we had embedded at least 1200 mm in the rock. And the pile cap is provided. In such piles, one master ring is always provided of 16 mm dia, the 16 mm dia 1.5 center to center. It's not clear here, but the master ring is provided at uh, six at 1.5 meter center to center. And this one more helical ring is provided. 10 mm dia or 12 mm dia diameter is sufficient for this. And again, this pile cap depth that should satisfy the criteria of LDC and LDT uh, in this case too. This is the flow uh, rough foundation that was, I was referring to where the area of the port building is very large uh, and uh, in column spacing where also the distance between the columns, uh, columns were also very uh, large. And the requirement as the spacing of these two columns is very uh, uh, is quite uh, yeah, large. The stress concentration or the shear force on these columns is uh, very high as compared to the, these columns. And the, here the depth requirement of the raft will be quite high as compared to the depth requirement at these columns. So what we did here, the, we found out the uh, different uh, reactions uh, uh, reactions on on the columns and we design foundation for average uh, loading and whatever the difference in loading between these columns and this uh, this average loading and this column this uh, column we had provided additional um, pedestals you can say at the top of the foundation to take care of the uh, Shear criteria. This is the reinforcement detailing which we did for that particular raft. You can see the this is the bottom uh, uh, bottom bottom face reinforcement and this is the top face reinforcement. This minimum reinforcement is provided all over the uh, bottom of the raft, and you can see where there is a column. There is a uh, Additional reinforcement is provided here because the moment uh, at the bottom of the column is uh, large as compared to this portion. And in this portion, you can see the reinforcement is provided at the top because because of this long span, because of this long span, the hogging moment is created at these locations. The hogging moment is also created in this location because of the spans are uh, very long. To tackle these moments, additional moments, the reinforcement is additional reinforcement is provided at the top and additional reinforcement is provided also at the bottom below the column. Usually, this happens that below the column, the reinforcement is provided at the bottom and in the center portion, the additional reinforcement is provided at the top. When we design the raft for the bridge foundation, the same case happens there also. Mr. Raipure? Ha, sir. If you don't mind, uh... We are going past the time. OK, sir, hardly uh, ten, minutes. 10 minutes. Yeah, please add the fast. Yeah, uh, this is the rough uh, foundation. Rough foundation detail, as I told you, the depth requirement is very high near the face of the column. That's why the additional pedestals are provided here and the additional reinforcement at the bottom. The problems in the encoded in the deep excavation, uh, when we go for the deep excavation, it is uh, 
you will have to be very careful. You can see that there's a very deep excavation. You can see the height of the man here and the depth of the excavation. This is the soil nailing which will prevent the collapse of collapse of this soil inside the excavation area. This is again soldier and tie back uh, type of soil retention in which the soil is retained through these ledges. This uh, girders are embedded into the soil before excavation, and as we go deep, we provide we uh, provide the ledges in between these two girders so that the oil can uh, soil can be retained here. You can see the rain uh, is moving, uh, train is moving, and this underpass is also there. Just uh, see the how important this uh, soil retaining is. The similar type of uh, uh, soldier and which uh, uh, soil retain showing for soil. We can see the excavation is done here and they have to yet to put the this ledges. This ledges are put uh, in between the these two girders. This is very uh, economical type of soil retention because you can uh, almost take out each and everything. You can almost take out the, this the girders and this rafter and this ledges and you can utilize their uh, to other side. Only that will go west. This is the you can see these bolts which are anchored into the adjoining area, uh, adjoining uh, soil. You can see these uh, residential uh, residential cottages just adjoining to the uh, existing building. Uh, this uh, new uh, proposed building will come up. This is because this is in the uh, old area of Nagpur. Uh, you will find that there is hardly any side margin left between the two houses. Then uh, builder wants to construct two basements. That's why this complete exercise was undertaken. This is quite economical as compared to others because of its reusable. The same type of soil retention in seed piles. There also instead of ledges, the sheets are used and you can see the steel members which are embedded into the soil. This is the pile wall. This is a little bit costly affair, but this is the safest. Uh, yeah, this cannot be reused. You can see these piles are uh, provided all along the uh, boundary of the plot so that uh, there won't be any problem to the adjoining structure. This is the case of uh, Mumbai, uh, which we uh, I did one hospital there and you can see the adjoining hospital just uh, behind. This is a common wall for both the hospital. There was an old part which was dismantled and again a new building one new tower was erected here that, that tower was G plus 12. The same uh, foundation of that uh, photograph of foundation of that same uh, site. The few mistakes that usually happen at site and nobody cares about it, but that may result into some casualties if we are not careful about this. This is the one site at Nagpur and uh, builder has excavated up to uh, four or five meter without giving due consideration to the adjoining buildings. You can see that, that this foundation got settled and you can see the deflection here sagging here. The same, the porch was also there that also sag. Immediately they called me and again, this was not my design, but uh, some other, but the builder was my friend and he called me and then I immediately asked him to refill the complete soil and then do the proper soil retention and then he carried out the further work. Such type of mistakes also happened at the site. Everything is perfect, but you can see the soil, uh, the side soil is collapsed in the footing area. And uh, if we don't uh, ask the contractor to remove the same, the concreting will be put in this. And soil is as good as cancer to the concrete. Once it gets into the contact with the reinforcement, the rusting process will start and the building and this foundation will not last for which we had designed. This is the real foolishness of the site engineer. And he has excavated the portion below because this footing is coming up to this point. So he said, what can I do, sir? You had given the drawing me and accordingly I had uh, put there. But the designer was not aware that there is a building in the area and these footings are get, uh, getting overlapped. That's why the inspection of the site before the foundation the drawing is issued to the contractor is very important. Such problems can be avoided later on. This is again the building in the very dense area of Nagpur. 
and here also the construction was from boundary to boundary this is the boundary of this owner and owner of this ward owner also wanted to construct house from this point to uh, from boundary to boundary and this is a load bearing structure you can see if something goes wrong and if uh, suddenly unseasonal run, uh, rains happen then what will happen to this uh, building you can just imagine so such mistakes we should try to avoid Again, this was a case of multi-story building where the builder don't want to spend money on the soil shoring. And suddenly the season change and the rainy season starts before at least 15 to 20 days. And then he have to do all this exercise. Again, he refilled this complete, soil, complete area and put the sheet piling and then, then only he was able to carry out the further foundation. Such problems can be easily avoided if uh, proper decisions are taken at the same. The same case here also. And there is the classic photograph. And such type of uh, working should be avoided at the site and we should be very careful about uh, when we do the excavations, when all the safety measures uh, should be properly taken. You can see the man standing and with the excavation is being carried out. If he, he cannot see this man, such type of foolishness should be avoided as far as possible. At the end, I will request all the civil engineers to have a positive attitude and uh, he should acquire skill. He should also gain knowledge. He should maintain his integrity and he should have passion to, for his uh, profession. And this will be our real service to the nation and tribute to Bharat Ratna Sir Mokshagandam Vishweshwarya. I want to thank Dr. Ajit Sabnis for giving me this opportunity to share my experiences. Uh, I, uh, I don't know, sir, whether I have fulfilled your expectations or not. And I will also uh, want to thank Sudhanwar Shingare for his very important inputs regarding soil investigation. And at last, uh, we should always remember that for a civil engineer, there should not be any such thing that is called as little mistake. All the construction work is a teamwork. It's not any individual work. Always remember that. You can get in touch with me on srayapur at gmail.com or my mobile number 9822465948 if you have got any queries. I would like to thank ACC and uh, all the participants for uh, listening to my experiences. I thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Satish Raipuri. That was wonderfully uh, presented about the most important uh, element of uh, structure, the foundations. Thank you very much. Now I think uh, I will release. Uh, now I have uh, unmuted everyone. Uh, one by one, any questions? You can always unmute yourself and pose a question to engineer Satish Raipuri. I have a question. Sir, my name is Mr. Madhav Can Kamath. I throw the first question? Uh, Mr. Madhav, Madhav Kamath, Kamath, please go ahead. Uh, please go ahead. This is about the transfer of load at the base of a column. In uh, sir? When the column, the transfer of load to the footing, IS code allows you a lesser grade of concrete in the footing because of a higher bearing the stress that can be used. Can this, can, can this principle be used in a beam and slab raft? So the lesser grade of concrete uh, mm, is allowed, but again increase the depth and the reinforcement requirement. No, I think you have not understood Hello. my question, sir. Uh, would you please repeat that again? See, the IS code allows a higher bearing stress at the base of the column. Higher? Higher bearing, bearing stress in concrete at the base of a column. Right. So, can this, this principle be used in a raft, in a raft foundation? I still not got to your, what you want to say. See, you are allowed to use a lower grade of concrete in the footing and a higher grade of concrete in the column at the base. 
because at the base of the column a higher bearing stress is allowed by the code okay <clears throat> have you have you understood what i'm saying Mm, still not. Anybody can explain that. I think there is a uh, distortion in the sound, uh, Madhav. I think we can go to the next, and then we can come back to the other one once the clarity comes. I would like to say. I would write your question to me. That will be better. No, I would like to. I would like to clarify what he is asking. I am Dr. Naikar here from Bangalore. Hey, Dr. Uh, Naikar. See, yeah. So what he is, uh, Mr. Kamath is asking the bearing stress. At the junction of column and B, so if there is a column, change column and foundation, of, yeah, column and foundation. If there is a change of grade of concrete between footing and column, uh, is his question. So now, what I would like to clarify is bearing stress with respect to the footing grade of concrete has to be satisfied. Yes, yes, yes. yes obviously. Yeah, that, that's all is the answer. No, I'm ask my my question is whether this principle can be used in a beam and slab raft. Obviously, obviously. Beam and slab raft, the same thing can be used in mean, beam and slab raft also. But most of the in most of the cases in superstructure also, you will find that the uh, designers give different grade of column for column, different grade of concrete for column, and different grade of concrete for slab and beam. This should not happen because it's very difficult to. Uh, what grade of concrete should be uh, placed at the junction of the beam and column? That is that, is, convenient. that is not a very convenient way to follow. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kamath. I think uh, Dr. Ram Prakash would like to uh, pose a question. Yeah, Dr. actually, Mr. not a question, but uh, I'd like to uh, clarify to Mr. Kamath that uh, when he is talking about bearing stress, the bearing stress depends upon both the concretes. It's not dependent only on one of the concrete. So the bearing stress of the lower one will govern the area required for the bearing stress. So the question is, uh, you know, uh, to be answered that way, that the bearing stress will depend upon the lower grade of concrete that you are using with respect to the two units, you know? So that's what it yes. is. Yes. Would you understand, Mr. Kamal? Yes, yes. yes. Yeah, thank you. Okay. Sir, sir, this is Ola Karola from Goa. Hello. Uh, yeah, go ahead, uh, Mr. Karola. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my issue is, uh, you see this LDC issue that is there for the yeah. footing. Now, if the diameter of bar is large, the footing depth unnecessarily goes up. Can we use a pedestal? Pedestal, it should have a uh, sufficient size, uh, like we did uh, do it in step footing. In that case, you can go for the step footing. Then this pedestal or this LDC criteria will be satisfied. No, but uh, what what would be the minimum size of the pedestal? Minimum uh, offset from the from the main column. Uh, where we check the shear uh, shear of the shear shear in the shear in the footing. The up to that uh, yeah, the shear issue would be coming in. Now basically, once you put a pedestal, the shear uh, your your uh, both your beam and punching shear would be would be improving. Actually, it should be from the uh, uh, width of the column. If the uh, D is the width of the column, we should, we should provide a D on either side. Pedestal of uh, 3D and uh, 3B. Of size 3D. Okay. And... okay. Okay. So 3D is what you would, would be looking at. Yeah, yeah. 3D okay. and 3B. Yeah. The second issue I have, sir, is this thing. Now, based on 1893, when you have a, when you have a softer soil, but that means based on your SPT value, say 15, um, 15 or 20, you have to go for a pinned joint. Hmm. And in that situation, how do you detail the, the column and the footing junction? Basically, do you provide a, a, a pin joint per se or, or how do you provide a steel? Do you provide a steel differently or how do you provide? Because this is an issue that has been troubling me a little bit. To create a pin joint, uh, it's a very difficult in the concrete. I know, I know, I know. So how do you do that? How, how does it behave if finally if you provide a normal column going into the footing? You are only saying... In the analysis, you are taking a pin joint. Your your stresses in the structure go up. You will have to uh, detail the reinforcement accordingly so that uh, it will create an hinge at that joint. 
So how do you create a change? Mm, right. You do create that change joint basically in the in the column. But that is a very complex thing. You have to discuss the reinforcement and create a joint in a. Uh, you'll find that uh, it can be given in any uh, RCC book. How they? No, no, I am aware of that. I am aware of that. But is that uh, is that being followed? No. I have never seen such type of construction. No, exactly. Mm -hmm. See, the code uh, says that code code has given this provision. But code is not mentioned how to do it. I never provide a pin jointed uh, column and uh, column footing. No, no, uh, that's okay. Yeah. That's, that's fine. But basically, and, the uh, SPD values are say, say 12 yeah. or 15. What do you do? The whatever code the code of okay, a pin joint as a as a as a uh, as a support. Pin whatever support. The, pin support. Uh, whatever the uh, reinforcement detailing that is shown to create a pin joint, it's very difficult to achieve at the site. Exactly, exactly. I, I'm aware of that. So how do we, how do you provide that? Because see, the code says something. We have to follow the yes. code, and we are not following the code uh, in totality. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any answer for that. Maybe some senior. Uh, can I say something from... that, sir? Can, uh -huh. I, can I say something? Uh -huh. Can I say something? Madhav, come here. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah, Madhav San. Madhav, tell me. If, if, if it is not very high. Madhav, sir, your voice is not the rotation of the footing. The rotation of the footing will reduce the bending moment to a very low value so that it yes. becomes a pin joint. Yes. Or you so provide, you provide a reinforcement. Do you provide a lower reinforcement in the, in the lower portion of the column where the footing comes in? Because actually the moment would be zero there. And at the top of the column, in the same same flow, the the moment would be very high, much higher. Uh, so can I answer this? Of the, regardless of the yeah, Dr. Prakash. Yeah, the thing is that uh, the code is not talking about what you do to provide a hinge. Uh, yeah, the, exactly. The code is talking about providing a hinge at the place, and mostly uh, that yeah. that will be a mechanical hinge. It will not be something to do with the reinforced concrete. That's the uh, first uh, observation of that. The second one is the stiffness of the column. If it is tapered and uh, it gets reduced to the bottom, then naturally you'll get a hinged uh, effect. Do we provide such, de such details in a multi-story building? Yeah, I know. I know. So uh, in multi-story building, either you provide a mechanical hinge to get your uh, hinge condition. You can't do it with uh, reinforced concrete. Exactly. Then, exactly. Yeah. But this 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 needs a little clarification from some some authority to 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 state how do we how do we proceed? I mean, it's, it's mentioned in 1893, but uh, nowhere is mentioned how do we go about? Yeah, that's okay. my problem. Anyway, I think I just wanted to put my point. That's 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 it. Yeah, sure. Thank you. I think, I think Thank you. Has, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can proceed with that. With can I add here one point? Yes, sir. Yeah, Dr. Naikar. Yeah. See now, uh, uh, whether the column and base is fixed or pinned is only a assumption what we make, but in reality it will be, it will be something else which depends on side structure interaction. So in order to have a realistic uh, design uh, results, we definitely have to do side structure interaction. But when we are assuming something as pin or fixed, it's only a assumption which is approximate. That, that much I can say. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Naikar. I think uh, Mr. Amarish has a question. Sir, sir, yeah. Good evening. Sir. Good evening. Sir, sir, I have two questions, sir. Sir, please go on ahead. AS code, AS code, AS code, AS code says that we have to design for factor of safety of 1.5 of dead load and low load. Hello? Okay. Okay. Load factor. Sir, is it audible, sir? Hello? Right. Yes, yes, you are audible. Go ahead. Yeah, factor of safety for design we have to take is one point. In terms of dead load and yeah, sir. But my point is, go ahead, go ahead. sir, in, uh -huh. a, in a structure, the dead load is permanently it's permanent. No, sir, that's value will not increase. Uh, so, can we reduce or can we take lesser factor of safety for dead load, and we can take one point five five for uh, live load? I will recommend you to go for reverse. You can uh, take the factor of safety 1.5 for dead load and you can reduce the live load factor. Because live load is not permanent. Yes, sir. Yes, can sir. I yes, say sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll just say this that uh, uh, the codes are dependent upon each country. And uh, I think uh, yes, the US code has got 
1.6 and 1.7 or something like that. Uh, 1.6 for the dead load and 1.7 for the live load or something like that. Because they found out yes, that uh, the dead loads are uh, quite uh, definable uh, yes, in, uh, in the Western countries. It won't exceed and things like that. But in uh, India, okay. the dead loads cannot be uh, projected accurately. So the code the naturally works for conservativeness and okay. second 1.5. It is not something which can be watered. You can't change it. You have to use 1.5. Okay, sir. thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Next. Any other question? This is Sivaraman. I have a couple of questions. Yeah, While deciding the test on uh, Pile Foundation, how to decide whether we should conduct a static load test or a dynamic load test? Is there any methodology or any? Mm, static load test, I don't know much about the static load test, but I had seen the dynamic load test, and with the dynamic load test, we can get the roughly the same bearing capacity, of the safe load carrying capacity of the pile. But uh, when to decide, uh, when to go for a, a static load and when we can choose a, a dynamic load is based static on the space load, requirement. The static load uh, test is very uh, time consuming and you need to uh, prepare a lot of things for the static load condition. But the dynamic load condition is very instant and you get, get the results very quickly. Okay, thank you. My next question is, uh, uh, is there any logic that uh, we can decide which pile to be tested, either static or dynamic? Is there any I will logic? Recommend you, I will, you can, for static load, you can create a separate pile and uh, do the static load testing like uh, we do the load testing on the bridges. And uh, in dynamic load testing, you can take the uh, random piles. If there are 100 piles, you can uh, at least uh, test the 10% of the piles. Just to get the idea of the load carrying, cap load carrying capacity of each and pipes. Recently, we are planning one structure which is uh, 208 meters by 180 meters, a single RCC building. We are doing it for uh, Haldirams and uh, it's an expansion less building, expansion joint less building. So, there uh, we have provided uh, end bearing pipes. There are almost uh, 600, 600 columns and most of them are having four piles and uh, four piles uh, four pile foundation because the loading is uh, somewhere it is one ton per square meter and uh, somewhere it is 1.5 ton per square meter with building in g plus one so there the requirement of uh, we had provided uh, the same bearing piles and tested randomly wherever we found that uh, uh, depending upon the project manager's experience, uh, if, he, if he feels that uh, here the pile completing was not done properly, he tested that pile. And Correct. Uh, the corrections were meant accordingly because and, uh, in 90% cases, the pile load uh, was whatever we, uh, whatever that was given by the majority of the technical consultant. Yeah. Thank you. Sir. I think any student community is uh, a very question from students. I would uh, encourage you to come forward and ask any question. Good evening, sir. I have one question, sir. Who is this? Sir, what is, sir, yes, sir. Sir, uh, is there any criteria for the overhang length for the isolated footing? Because many times uh, uh, footing, uh, if bearing capacity is low, uh, footing requirement is like a 4 meter by 4 meter or 3.5 by 4 meter uh, for a isolated footing. I don't think there is criteria for overhang. Just we'll have to design uh, whatever the overhang it is, you'll have to design and uh, depth will be depth requirement and steel requirement will be more. At one place, we had provided foundations of 6 meter by 6 meter. Although the column was one meter by one meter and we have provided their six meter by six meter foundation. It was a library building and G plus three story building. The loading was very huge. That was constructed in 2008. There also the SBC was very low, but the depth requirement will, was uh, quite uh, huge. So we need and, and similarly, and similarly yes, for the cantilever length, can we curtail the steel? Uh, 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 for the overhang length, uh, you can curtail it. 
Okay, thank you. Mr. Vinit Reddy, you have a question? So follow the spacing criteria. The spacing criteria given in IS code that must be followed for cutting the lens. Shubham is here. Shubham Mubai. Who's this? This is the same model. Sir, this is Am I audible, sir? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah sure. sir. I have a doubt. Uh, sir, uh, in, during the structural auditing, we have the very old building. So if the building is not having the uh, structural detailing of a foundation and other things, of course, for the superstructure, we could do with the multi, uh, multi level scanner. But what about the foundation drawing? So, how we can get the structural detailing of the existing building? If you don't have any drawings, it's very difficult to get the structural detailing of uh, that particular structure. What I would recommend, you can uh, excavate in the corner column, near the corner column. You can go till the foundations and uh, you can measure the actual uh, width and breadth of the footing by going till that depth. So this will help you in getting the soil strata, idea about the soil strata on which the strata on which that foundation is rest, uh, rested. And you can also work out the load on that column. Now we have got the superstructure and we can prepare the drawing for that. You can calculate the load on column and see whether that foundation provided is sufficient or not. But we do not have no idea about the interior columns, interior footing. We can work out by making some approximations. If, uh, if load on this column, uh, we could arrive the value, but it may not be right. It may not be correct. Also, it clearly happens that uh, if this footing is right, the another footing will go wrong. But uh, you can get a fair idea yeah. about what kind of uh, sizes uh, the designer must have provided in that uh, below that column also. Oh, can so I? Can I? I am on? working in the government college. No, kind of things. The buildings were of uh, age old structures, more than 30 years, 40 years, something like. But they don't have the drawings. For slab beam columns, we have the multi level scanners, river locator, everything we have. We could get those building uh, elements, but we couldn't be able to get the things related to foundation. Well, tell me what, what uh, you need all these drawings. Yeah, correct. What is the intention? What is the intention of getting all these drawings? Can I can I just add a little to that? Uh, yeah, Go ahead. Yeah, Go madam. Ahead. Uh, what you should do is you have uh, the, uh, the 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 size of the footing, and uh, you yes, have sir. the concrete that is exposed. You have the strength of the concrete. At that particular okay. time, say 30 years back, what was the minimum reinforcement that was stipulated by the code? You assume yes, that sir. the minimum reinforcement is to, as stipulated 30 okay. years back has been taken and uh, determine okay. whether that footing is safe. Okay. If it is not, then you strengthen it. I mean, that's the best okay. way to do it when you don't have uh, data. Okay. I have one small I point. For, yeah, okay. I have one small so, point for Mr. Raipure. Mr. Raipure, uh, to complete the whole thing, can you please talk about the net bearing capacity and uh, 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 what, what do you call this? Safe bearing capacity and the net bearing capacity is some definition you'll have to tell everybody, which comes in a soil investigation, you know. So net, bearing, huh, net bearing capacity is the capacity is the maximum load that can soil bear. And the safe bearing capacity is the net bearing capacity divided by factor of safety. Usually for building, uh, for building purpose, it is 2.5. The net bearing capacity divided by factor of safety, that will give you the safe bearing capacity. Now, the thing is, net bearing capacity, they give you the bearing capacity, but uh, if you want the net bearing capacity, then you have to redu reduce the fill that is there above the foundation. Uh, generally, that is, that is taken uh, care and only then the net bearing capacity is given. Correct. Uh, usually, the soil investigation will either give you a net bearing capacity or will give you the bearing capacity. So, you have to be careful what words they use in the particular uh, investigation. That's what is coming. To. They uh, mention what is the safe bearing capacity with the factor of safety that has been taken 2.5 to 3. And that will give you the shared calculation. Yes. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Thank yeah, you, Dr. Right. Prakash. I think I have one question. Can I ask? One last question will be allowed. 
Sir, uh, before a design of early footing, we must know the say here in capacity that is SVC. So uh, generally, if take in Nagpur area, how much SVC assume for the design of the footing? Like for the construction of bungalow, or the construction of D plus two or D plus three story building, and how much SVC we, we must assume for the uh, design of the footing? You cannot assume the SVC. You will have to investigate and determine the SVC. Yeah, yeah, sir. Yeah, sir. But uh, if, if it not get reasonable for the construction of bungalow or simply uh, two-story building, then, then also we must go for investigation of this. Uh, Sometimes we assume it as we see. No, no, it's not. Don't take the that risk. If you are uh, experienced good enough, then you can uh, easily judge the building capacity. You are spending lakhs of rupees in the construction of the uh, uh, building, and you can't uh, afford to spend few thousands to get the uh, soil investigation done. Yes, sir. For building, obviously, uh, investigation must be done. For just the construction of the houses, in houses, just a uh, two-story building. Then also, it is reasonable for you to investigate. Technical engineer, or you know, one fifty or two hundred. No, there is no thumb rule like that. You can assume any base BC. You will have to see the soil and then only you can uh, tell what the SBC is symmetric. Not okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Shubham. I think with this we'll uh, we're coming. Have we come to the end of the lecture uh, today? And uh, uh, my thanks to Engineer Satish Raipuri for wonderfully presenting this most difficult element and as well as the most important element of a structure, the foundations. And I thank all the participants for having come here and participated in this so actively. And uh, uh, with this, uh, we end today's one and I welcome you all for next week's uh, lecture on uh, next Saturday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir, for giving me this opportunity to share my views. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Satish. Thank you for, uh, thank for, you. The, for the wonderful uh, deliberations. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.